Alright, let's spend some time in going over some key mechanisms that we have seen. Doesn't mean these are the only one for grabs, but um, you should know everything that we solved in class. But just to give you a flavor of a couple of things. The first one hopefully you can see is starting from an alkyl halide. Treating that with PPH3 should be a Wittig reaction. That's right. So triphenylphosphine is going to carry out an attack in an SN2 manner. Let's maybe erase that. So, yeah. So the bromine is going to leave and you're going to end up with, just to kind of keep my carbons consistent, I'm going to go ahead and number these so I don't lose track of the number of carbons that I have. And that will give me 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 pPH3 with a positive charge. Like we discussed in class, anytime you have a positive charge on phosphorus, it's not going to be very stable and it would want to it, um, uh, essentially get rid of that positive charge. And one way to do that will be that if you treat this with a strong base like n-butyl lithium, that n-butyl lithium is going to try to get rid of the most acidic proton that happens to be this guy right next to the positive charge. And when that happens, going to end up with a negative charge right here, PPH3, that's where the positive charge is, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we are going to then treat that with um, our carbonyl compound, so your A is nothing but this elid. We are going to now treat that with the aldehyde. The aldehyde in question in this case is benzaldehyde. So like we discussed in class, the negative goes to the electrophilic carbon and the positive goes to the uh, oxygen. So you're going to end up with the betaine. So negative to positive is what you should be drawing. Carbon to oxygen, hydrogen still intact. Oxygen and phosphorus will make a bond. PPH3 still intact. One methyl. Three carbons. The phosphorus oxygen bonds will, will strengthen. And you're going to end up with the alkene that you desired. You should know the Wittig reaction as far as the mechanism go. You should know that as a prepared question. You should know that in a box problem. Any of those is fair game. Alright, let's move forward. The next one is that you're supposed to carry out a reaction between imine and hydronium ion. Hydronium ion, as you know, is H3O+. So nitrogen lone pair is going to attack. Water is going to leave. So this is the reversible reaction that we discussed. One was the mean formation. The backward reaction of that is what we are doing. Now nitrogen has a positive charge. It would want to attract the electrons towards itself. And that would mean there will be a positive charge right over here, which is where uh, water will attack. So let's show that. Let's show that in steps. which is where water is going to attack. And you're going to end up with um, OH2. So oxygen has a positive charge. And like I said in class, you can show that directly because this is one, two, and three. Anytime you have on one carbon, you have two OHs, a proton exchange can take place. Or if you have, let's say, OH2 on one and uh, another, a proton exchange can take place. So you can either show that directly that the nitrogen is going to pick up the proton 
relieve oxygen of the positive charge and itself give you N H but with a positive charge and O H which then can push the electrons methylamine will leave you would end up with a protonated ketone first and then the water is going to come back in pick up the proton and give you your desired products all right let's go forward we have a ketone and that is being treated with hcn and ammonia concoction and what you're getting is cyanohydrin and ammonium cyanide so of course the first step is going to be that you have hcn you treat it with nh3 and so that's going to pick up the proton cyanide is going to be removed and you will end up with NH4 plus CN negative which by the way is NH4CN so this step basically generates a better nucleophile which is cyanide as compared to HCN so let's take a look what happens next realize because it's a ketone that's the reason why you will need a slightly stronger nucleophile than you know what you would need for an aldehyde and of course you know that in case of any carbonyl compound the C double bond O is polar where you have negative charge moving towards oxygen so you have slight negative here slight positive here the negative is going to attack the positive you're going to end up with oxygen with negative and CN and now you have it can either pick up uh, a proton from the NH3 or it, it can do that with the HCN as well you can use HCN for that as well and HCN might be actually slightly a little bit better uh, because it continues to generate the nuclear cell until the reaction goes to completion and so your product is going to look like OHCN and so this is what is called as the cyanohydrin all right let's go forward the question here was that you had to fill in the blanks so what you were given was um, an aldehyde and what you end up getting is an acetal the way you can figure this out in terms of what you will need for the reaction is uh, recall from class you need an alcohol and the alcohol in question is going to be provided by all you did need to do is count the number of carbons so since in this case we have an acetal not a hemi acetal that means you will need two equivalents of ethanol and you're going to treat that in presence of an acid so you can write that as H plus or HCl whichever um, also you can write this as ethanol excess that means the same thing because it's not going to the reaction is not going to continue past the addition of the two equivalents but you can write that as excess as well uh, means the same thing all right let's take a look at this question we of course discussed that in class as well um, and the one thing that I said anytime you have like a prepare question you need to think about the first thing you should do always is to number so you have a cyclohexyl and you have one two three four oh yeah and this is five and this is six here you have one two three four and you have five and six so hopefully you can see that basically it's a possibility that we would be able to at some point of time cleave that three five bond so one might question well what are the ways because you have a ketone and and an aldehyde what are some of the ways to do that notice recall um, we learned in class that if you basically click this right you would get an alkene and that upon ozonolysis is going to give you the ketones or the aldehyde so that's a great way great technique to do that now that would mean that you basically have to convert this starting material somehow into into the 
double bond and so this is five this is six three four two and one and so what that means is that if you are able to cleave this with ozone ozone followed by zinc and acetic acid we would have what we need so hopefully you can see that the last step is you know pretty uh, sorted now the thing that you need to worry about is how is it that we can go from your starting material to the double bond that's what we are going to focus now now as you're seeing if I treat this triple bond so the alkyne if I treat that with with water acid and you do need mercury in case of alkynes you're going to end up with addition of water according to the Marconikov's rule so this follows Marconikov's rule and this is a enol version so this is going to quickly tautomerize to give you the ketone and so what you can do is you can convert the ketone into the corresponding alcohol by a reduction reaction so if you treat that with sodium borohydride THF is going to be your solvent and of course you have to then wash it with dilute acid and you will end up with the structure now your aim is to see essentially how can you go from how can you go from the secondary alcohol to the alkene so here to here how can you do that realize if you just subject this to uh, dehydration conditions if you remove the OH here the H to give the most substituted alkene should be the one that should be lost so if you treat this with H2SO4 H2SO4 if you treat this with H2SO4 and heat you can even use H3PO4 and heat you can even use POCl3 betadine uh, 0 degrees Celsius any of those three reactions will do the trick and give you the corresponding alkene and the alkene when subjected to treatment with ozone and uh, zinc and acetic acid will give you your desired uh, two component ketone and aldehyde all right let's take a look at another one you are given in this particular case and this is a pretty interesting one you are given in this case that you start with an acetal and you're subjecting that to hydrolysis and that is being treated with an LED so the reason why I call it interesting is because I did not say that I would have used CH3Br with phosphine, triphenylphosphine, and then subject it to N-butyl lithium. I am just putting the N directly. And so that will tell you that that part is going to be a wedding. And so the key, in case you're lost with the first step, the key is that what does Wittig react with? Wittig always reacts with an aldehyde or a ketone. So realize acetals upon treatment with the hydronium ion is going to actually go through a hydrolysis step. So you're going to remove the OCH3 and get the corresponding aldehyde. Benzaldehyde is what you have. And then we are going to subject that to treatment with CH2 with a negative and P, PH3 with a positive so it's going to basically add the CH2 across the double bond so your product should look like a benzene ring double bond and then CH2 and that's it Alright, let's also take a look at some box problems. So you have a ketone which is being converted into al alcohol. So that's basically a reduction reaction. You can use what you want, sodium borohydride, THF, or you can use, um, we can use the lithium aluminum hydride, T3, 
THF, hydrogen and rani nickel will also do the trick. So that give you the alcohol. Now sometimes I might ask you, you know, because this is information from organic ones, so you should know that, that the ketone is always going to be in a tautomeric form with respect to the enol. So you can at any given point of time write down the most substituted uh, ene with the OH. Anyway, now when it's time to treat with PBR3, the BR is going to exchange for the OH and the product that you should get would be a bromine a bromine um, in the place where OH was. Recall PCC is an oxidizing agent. You have a secondary alcohol, so you should end up with a ketone, which upon reaction with Wittig should basically give you an alkene where the double bond was. Upon ozone, ozone analysis, that's just the opposite of that. So you cleave the double bond and you're going to end up with the ketone and the aldehyde formaldehyde in this case of course the ketone will react with the Grignard reagent um, the alkyl group is going to attack right here so recall Grignard is a good way of getting uh, adding alkyl groups Add the carbonyl on the carbon atom. That should be your product. All right, here is a question which students find kind of challenging, and it's actually not. If you think about it, um, you're given an acetal, or in this case, you can call it a, you, know, you can call it an acetal, that's fine. Um, the acetal that you have, Basically, if you cleave here and here, you can see that that must have been obtained from ethylene glycol, which is why you have that ring. And then you have an ester up top, which is being subjected to treatment with lithium aluminum hydride. And you know that lithium aluminum hydride is a strong reducing agent, and it's going to bring the carboxyl acid group all the way to the primary alcohol through the aldehyde stage. So first you will get the conversion into aldehyde and that will eventually give you the primary alcohol. But in that process as that occurs, essentially the CO, the single bond, um, that gets cleaved off. So you're going to end up with one molecule after hydrolysis with one molecule of uh, CH3OH one molecule of ethylene glycol because hydrolysis is going to cleave off the acetal and what's remaining is going to be your product. So let's take a look what the product will look like. You started right here and that is the carbon that becomes the primary alcohol. That's what I have and this used to be an aldehyde which was protected as an acetal. So the C double bond OH is what you're going to get at the end of the day. Okay, another one, we have a double bond and we are subjecting that to ozonolysis conditions. Anytime you use you, anytime you CO3, that means ozonolysis has to be done on the double bond or a triple bond. In this case, we are just going to cleave right at the double bond to get the carbonyl compounds. Recall from organic one, if we would have had a triple bond, that would give me carboxylic acid. Not here though. The way you figure out the answer is basically you put in a C double bond O on both sides of the double bond. And so I gave you one of the products right here. So that's same as the formaldehyde. And what's remaining is your second product. I'm just curious if something like this is given and you have to figure out what or how would you go about it. Um, notice... There's a boatload of PPH3, N-butyl lithium, um, and that is being added to something which gives you something, and maybe right here the word betaine is written. Right here the word elid is written. 
So you should you should know that this part is where it's calling out loud waiting at you. And it's also giving you an L keen at the end of the day, which is getting converted into a the sherry alcohol. A couple of things. First of all, they're asking what are the reaction conditions that you can use to convert the tertiary or the alkene to the tertiary alcohol. And if you want to follow Markonikov's rule, which is what you are following here, your only two options are one, H plus with H2O, or you can go with mercury sulfate or mercury nitrate. Um, and water and then sodium borohydride NaBH4 so that's the oxymercuration demercuration reaction one or the other if on the other hand they would have gone from alcohol to the alkene you can use something like H3PO4 heat or you could have used H2SO4 or heat or you could use POCl3 uh, but the double bond is going to get at this location because it involves a benzylic carbon and that's an important piece okay how do I know which alkyl halide to begin with sometimes I even write these that this is supposed to be an alkyl halide I even write that not many people pay attention to it though but it's for a reason that I'm giving you there of course, you know alkyl halide with magnesium gives you the Grignard reagent. And it says that the Grignard reagent is supposed to react with a symmetrical ketone to get the tertiary alcohol. Symmetrical ketone means that the two R groups flanked uh, on the, both the sides of the C double bond O have to be identical. And so that should tell you that this part is going to give you that ketone. To me, this should be our ketone. That means the remainder is what comes from the alkyl halide. So let's draw the structure of the alkyl halide. With magnesium, it's going to give you MgBr. And so that's your first Grignard synthesis, which gives you the tertiary alcohol. And I'm kind of tying the Wittig in in you know, sort of into it. Uh, with PPH3, you're supposed to get PPH3 positive. N butyl lithium takes away the proton. And you're supposed to treat it with something so that you get the betaine, which is going to collapse into the desired alkene. Recall that when the uh, betaine collapses into the alkene, it's the P double bond OPH3 that is lost. That means you're supposed to essentially put in the POPH3 the POPH3 okay one more time across across that double bond so that it would collapse and boom you will have your alkene so I'm backtracking here essentially the structure of my alkene is giving me information as to what I have and where where, I, where do I want to go. Realize that the carbonyl compound um, in this case should be since I already have the benzene ring and the benzylic position. So here's my benzene ring and here's the benzylic positions and the remainder is what I'm seeking. So essentially you could cleave right in the middle again. You're supposed to, I told you in class, you're supposed to put a BR on one side and C double bond O on the other. So that gives you the structure of the ketone that you will need um, for the reaction. It happens to be the exact same symmetric ketone that we used in the Grignard. So they go kind of, you know, they, they, they give you similar products. And so that's going to be your betaine. 
which collapses into the alkene and that can be treated with the tertiary alcohol and give you your desired product. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were you, I mean, I have said this multiple number of times, organic chemistry is best learned um, if you can analyze, apply, and then synthesize a problem. So what if, what if the words symmetrical ketone, if they would not have been here, how would you go about it then? Would it change anything is, is my question. And the answer to that question is that you can uh, still get, you know, the product, but you have more alternatives. So if we don't limit ourselves to the ketone being symmetrical, you can take a look at the product and you can, you know, this is your product and you can say, maybe, maybe my ketone comes from here. And that would mean that your ketone is... CH2, C double bond O, CH2, CH3, and that would mean that the two carbon atoms here and here, they're going to be added through the Grignard reagent. So this guy is CH3, CH2, MgBr. That would mean that your starting alkyl halide should be right here. Um, of course, you're going to treat it with PPH3, much the same way as previously. So that's going to give you the PPH3, positive charge. You're going to treat it with N-butyl lithium to get the LED. And that gives you PPH3 positive and a minus. And now if we ask what kind of a carbonyl compound should we treat it with to get the betaine, and the betaine is going to collapse into your alkene. Um, that alkene again is being converted into the tertiary alcohol. So the same way as we did previously, you can either use H plus and water or you can use oxymercuration, demercuration strategy, either or. And if you wanted to dehydrate the alcohol back, and again, notice it's the benzylic position that will take up the double bond, even though the saturation or rather the substitution uh, level is the same in both of uh, those positions is the benzylic position which is going to be most stable so let's say we use pocl3 pyridine that's a nice one um, and that gives you the dehydration product towards the alkene so i'm just supposed to figure out the carbonyl and the betaine and again as we did in class you're going to cleave right at the double bond you're going to add um, the carbonyl and you're going to add the um, the alkyl halide notice you are hitting a block here because you were supposed to i told you in class that you're supposed to add the br on one in one direction and the c double bond o in the other so you're supposed to put in you know your only two options for that alkene are a br here and a C double bond O like that. Um, or your other option is that you go with um, a BR here and a C double bond O as an aldehyde. Those are your options. But both of those are going to bring the double bond, you know, where it is. Now, if I compare to the alkyl halide that I started with, you know, I am not going to be able to get that because the alkyl halide that I have doesn't match my benzylic. It doesn't match my second one. So what am I supposed to do? What does that tell you? That there is a block here. You cannot use... Uh, you know, the ketone that we started, you cannot use that. Our original uh, symmetric ketone is a better strategy um, uh, to go by. But I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, do what not to do so that, because uh, some of you might fall in that, um, uh, in that, in that category and you, you, you might um, uh, trap yourself. Um, uh, take the time to see where the double bond uh, is also understand if your uh, seek your scheme of things was given uh, as that so there is a subtle change that 
uh, I made here. Uh, in this case, I kept the alkene a little bit open-ended. So then what you can do? Yes, in that event, you would be able to utilize either or. And the reason for that is because we have not um, specified, you know, uh, what kind of alkene uh, we are going to obtain we have not specified um, you can safely say that you know picking again um, the ketone and I'm going to pick the unsymmetrical ketone uh, so you can kind of follow along which means the MGBR exactly the same way as I did like two minutes ago um, and that means I have bromoethane here that means I have PPH3 with a positive charge here. That means I have PPH3, a positive here with a negative charge here. And I'm supposed to provide the structure of the carbonyl. So uh, what kind of carbonyl should I use if I already have this part? So what kind of carbonyl? You hopefully can see that uh, hydration of an alkene, and that alkene can be, This alkene. Notice this is different than what I had, and I'm just going to put that outside of the box. Earlier in the previous example, our double bond was at a different location, and that was the block that we were hitting because of which we were not able to use the Wittig chemistry. Um, but now we can because now I have a double bond, and when I cleave that double bond, I do have two carbons right over here which can be used through the elid that I have obtained and the remainder can be a part of the carbonyl. And so your elid will start, or I'm sorry, the betaine will start looking like PPH3 and it's going to collapse and, uh, oh I forgot the, and you're going to get your end product. Um, so the whole purpose of this, you know, 12 minute slide is to go through the options in terms of how open ended. Sometimes open ended is good because it leaves you with more choices. Um, if we would uh, fix the symmetric ketone, you don't have a choice. Symmetric ketones mean something. The alkyl group has to be um you know, uh, uh, has to be uh, the same on both sides of the ketone. So that fixes the ketones, so that fixes the alkyl halide, and the uh, rest is you will follow along. On the other hand, I gave you then another situation that if you try to, if the word symmetric ketone is not given, um, however the structure of alkene is given, um, you know, uh, you might be tempted, some of you might be tempted to go the second route, but make sure that you write down the structures and you yourself will hit the mental block. That means uh, the, the options that are possible, you should always keep those handy. Um, and of course, then I gave you a third case where the alkene structure is not given to you. So it's up to you which alkene you want to form. And both of these alkenes, the one in purple and the one in blue, both of these are going to, upon hydration, they are going to give you the same tertiary alcohol. Uh, it's just that one of them uh, can be generated by by um you know the the Wittig reaction the other one cannot by the sequence that we chose uh in the second scenario um the first scenario will give you give you the desired product all right okay let's get started so we have a ketone and it's showing here that it's in equilibrium or um you know it can change forms uh, from another form that should be an automatic you can't just draw this you know upside down and claim that oh it happens to be the same that makes no sense uh i think i just increased one two three four yeah yeah so uh by that by putting that arrow what we are trying to tell you is that there is some kind of an rearrangement reaction and so with ketone it's the enol that rearranges. That means you need to put a double bond within the carbon chain. And on the double bond, you need to put an OH to get the enol. Now, the question is that you have the ketone and it's converted into an alcohol. That means you're going to treat it with some kind of a reducing agent. Again, sodium borohydride. 
uh, THF followed by sodium borohydride THF should have been written here and followed by hydrolysis and that will give you your secondary alcohol you can use sodium borohydride you can use lithium aluminum hydride hydrogen rani nickel we saw a similar one uh, previously uh, upon treatment with POCl3 what do I know about POCl3 that is a dehydrating agent that's right so your two options are one is double bond between two and three the other is a double bond between one and two and hopefully you can see that the more substituted alkene is going to be your major product and that is your answer you should be putting in the box now we have a um, an aldehyde and we are treating that with a Grignard. Grignard always delivers the alkyl group so that's going to go right here. You're going to end up with CH3, CH2, OH. So you perhaps can see that it's the uh, formaldehyde carbon which is right here. And we are treating that with Jones reagent. What do we know about Jones reagent from chapter 17? It's a very, very strong um, oxidizing agent. So this is not going to stop here, uh, you know, at the aldehyde stage. This is going to go all the way to the carboxylic acid. All right. Part of this box problem was chapter 18, uh, but you've seen that. So let's still take a look at that. Um, it's a double bond. We are treating that with oxymercuration condition and then ring opening with an alcohol. So your product, you've seen this exact reaction, I don't know, I think maybe in a take-home quiz or some of you would have seen that. Um, so we have the ether and you also know that that's, that will be your product because um, upon treatment with strong base such as HBr or HI, in this case we'll use HI because this guy is I, and heat, uh, it's going to cleave right here and you would end up with the cyclohexanol and propyl iodide. It's asking though, how can you go from cyclohexanol to methyl cyclohexanol, one methyl cyclohexanol, what can you do? Um, and in order to do that, hopefully you can see you are adding a methyl. Anytime you have to add an alkyl group, so far we have covered Grignard reagents, so you should think about um, uh, Grignard reagents as the source for alkyl group. But you know that alkyl groups only add, or Grignard reagents rather, they only add uh, on a carbonyl compound. So the first step should be to convert the alcohol into uh, the ketone. So let's do a PCC dichloromethane, which is going to convert the cyclohexane into the cyclohexanone. And you need only one carbon, so let's just treat it with methyl magnesium bromide follow it up with hydrolysis and you will get your product all right i believe this is the last question um what should be the starting material treatment of which with diabol uh, gives you the aldehyde and an alcohol recall diabols uh, will react with an ester this is a straight reaction actually you don't even have to think too much about it um, Diabol is going to cleave, any ester reduction cleaves the single bond. This part is the alcoholic part is going to end up after hydrolysis as uh, methanol and the remaining is going to go as aldehyde. So essentially what you have done is you have added H and H across the C single bond O. Um, the first H was obtained from Diabol and the second H is obtained from the hydrolysis. And you're going to end up with, so recall I told you in class Diabol was diisobutyl aluminum hydride, diisobutyl aluminum hydride. So it's an H minus that's going to come in. That will attack ring, um, or rather um, electron density goes on top of oxygen it's going to come back and eventually the methoxide is going to go but since you're going to subject that to hydrolysis conditions it's going to pick up a proton and go as methanol um, in your reaction mixture all right good luck